Hello there. I found that one of the most useful tools in developing a body of work is keeping track of what you're doing by writing things down in a notebook. Chances are that as a photographer you are tilted towards the right side of the brain. That's more on the creative rather than the logical side of the spectrum. You are probably also visually orientated rather than words orientated. There's also a high probability that you are more interested in taking pictures than analyzing the hell out of why you are taking pictures. But in order to keep your head clear of too many ideas and thoughts, you need to put them somewhere. I'm not talking about photographic journaling here, although if that's what you like to do, that's fine. What I'm talking about is creating something basic and practical. While researching this video, I found that you can actually buy ready-made books for photographers. They've got loads of spaces for focal length and weather and ISO. But unless you're doing the kind of work that Ansel Adams does, where it's incredibly precise and you're doing maybe two shots a day, then this kind of book is overkill. You can call it a notebook or a project diary or whatever works for you. I don't use a template. I just keep a writing book of some kind with me so I can separate out my thinking time from my photographing time. So just find anything to write in. Put the name of your project or the working title on the cover and then regard it as an important bit of equipment to keep with you in your camera bag, say on a par with your camera or your lens. So in this video I'll have a look at why developing this habit is so useful. One of the first things that I start doing when I'm developing a project is jotting down the ideas that occur to me. Unless you're doing something really linear, then your project will change over time. When I say linear, I'm talking about something, you know, the obvious one is the bridges of Madison County. Basically, you know what your parameters are, that's what you do. I find that a good project idea usually percolates for a while in the back of my mind. But if it sticks around, then I start to write some of my thoughts down. Things like inspiration are important. You don't want to rationalize the creativity out of a project. So remember those initial reasons why you found the idea appealing. So I prefer to give my ideas some space and initially all I'm doing is just jotting down a few random thoughts. If you start too soon in the process trying to pin all the parameters down, you might lose out on a whole spectrum of inspiration. Sometimes it isn't obvious what sparks a theme. It could be a poem or a film or a song. But that's enough to keep you on the track until you can work the project through in your mind and develop a concept. I've built up what I feel is a healthy skepticism about the brilliance of rational thought. Usually my best ideas come out of somewhere in the creative ether. So I'm more inclined to tease ideas out over time. If I get a bit OCD about things and try and think everything through, then I find that sometimes I can get bored with the idea before I even start. So I think it's a bit like giving your mind an assignment. You telling it what you wanted to do and then you wait for the feedback. It's possible that the original idea will mutate over time and you will have something that's unrecognizable from the original idea. you need to ask the question, why are you doing the project? The reason might be subtle and nameless, like the urge to express a feeling or thought. But you can still write down 
the ideas that come to you until you can kind of build and develop the concept. The project might have a very obvious why question attached to it. Maybe you see it serving some purpose. I was once involved in an attempt to save the rhino in Southern Africa. This has a very obvious why question. Why am I doing it? Because I felt really strongly about killing these animals so that some rich guy can think he's found Super Viagra. Actually, eating an apple a day would probably do you more good in that department. Imagine how the project will look in its finished form. By working through your accumulated ideas, you can start to build a picture of how you'd like the finished essay to look. Maybe your aim is to print a photo book or put up the project on your website as a finished essay. Maybe you want to enter a photographic competition or it's part of an exhibition. The exercise of building a finished concept is useful in two ways. It provides motivation for you to get out there and take photographs because you can sort of see how you want it to be. And also while you're photographing and editing, you can start to see how the images are working together. You're looking at things like sequencing, tonal ranges, color palettes, and you might find big gaps in your idea that need to be addressed to make the communication more concise. I sometimes find a request for a project summary annoying because it forces a whole process of conceptualization into a very restrictive few paragraphs. But on the other hand, there are benefits to building a summary step by step in your notebook. What you're doing is basically finding an answer to the question, what is your project about? I have to be honest that often while I'm working on a project, I can't articulate it. The practical things that need to be done to achieve a project, like clearing time, booking accommodation, or servicing the car, they can seem so insurmountable that it's sometimes easier just to postpone the whole project. The creative process is basically blocked before you start. So write down all the practical stuff and then work through it to eliminate obstructions. I find that while I'm in the photographing phase, the pace of receiving thoughts increases. And rather than taking my eye off the ball, I just write them down so I can think about them later. There are also those nagging self-doubt thoughts that pop into your head when you're working. And I feel one's got to treat these in exactly the same way as the enthusiastic ones. You just write them down, you know, get their essence and then move on. Most of them will be run-of-the-mill negative stuff but every now and again they have some value and they need space to be worked through. Over the course of a project, I'll shift between being completely freewheeling and then being more logically focused. So I let myself have free reign to photograph and then when I you know, do some editing, I might find that I've gone off course or maybe I'm trying to do too many things at once. When you've got time to think things through, you are making various choices and then you try to articulate that in as well as best as you can in your notebook. So the next time you go out shooting, that information will be in the back of your mind. And basically then you can streamline your process. Once you've reached a point where your project is developed enough to see the big picture, then you can actually be a bit more precise about what's missing. It's interesting that neurological studies have shown that using handwritten notebooks as opposed to digital devices is far more effective in activating the brain regions associated with storage and re retrieval of information. It seems to have something to do with the sensory experience of crafting each letter. It activates motor skills and touch sensations and visual perception. 
So it's difficult to hold all of the ideas about your project in, in your mind. So get them out of your head as soon as possible so that there's space for the unconscious to be invented. The more trimmed down your inner brief is, the richer your vision can be. I hope this has been useful and please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Is it over yet? Yes, it is good. It really is. What are they? Well... And find out what the future holds in store. Is it over yet?